Hey everyone, welcome back to my tech channel. This is the part 2 video of iOS interview questions and answers. If you have yet not watched my part 1 video, the link is available in the description section below. Kindly check there. So without any further delay, let's jump into the questions. Question number 16. As you already know, in my each part, there are 15 questions. So as this is the part 2 video, so I will start with question number 16. Outline the class hierarchy for a UI button until NS object. So UI button inherits from UI control, UI control inherits from UI view, UI view inherits from UI responder, UI responder inherits from the root class NS object. So here I have added the graph representation for better understanding. Have a look. Next question. What is the purpose of reuse identifier? What is the benefit of setting it to a non-nil value? So the reuse identifier is used to group together the similar rows in a UI table view. The rows that differ only in their content, otherwise having similar layouts. A UI table view will normally allocate just enough UI table view cell objects to display the content visible in the table. If reuse identifier is set to a non-nil value, then the UI table view will first attempt to reuse an already allocated UI table view cell with the same reuse identifier when the table view is scrolled. So if reuse identifier has not been set, then the UI table view will be forced to allocate new UI table view cell objects for each new item that scrolls into view, potentially leading to laggy animations. So it's better to set it to a non-nil value. Next question, what is JSON? So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. JSON is a text-based, lightweight and easy way for storing and exchanging data. JSON is self-describing and easy to understand. It was derived from JavaScript. JSON file names use the extension .json. Let's see some of the rules of JSON syntax. Data is in name or value pairs. Data is separated by commas. Curly braces hold objects and square brackets hold arrays. Next, what is JSON serialization? The, it is the built-in way of parsing JSON and is called JSON serialization. JSON serialization class is used to convert JSON to foundation objects and convert foundation objects to JSON. In other words, it can convert a JSON string into a collection of dictionaries and arrays. Next, briefly explain reference types and value types with examples. So classes are reference types and structures are value types. In class, any change in one reference will affect other references as well. But in struct, when it is assigned to another variable, a copy is generated, which will not have any effect on the original value when changed. At a glance, classes versus struct. First, let's take a look at what classes and structs have in common. They can define properties to store values and they can define functions. They can define subscripts to provide access to values with subscript syn syntax. They can define initializers to set up their initial state with init. They can be extended with extension. This is really important. They can confirm to protocols, for instance, to support protocol-oriented programming. Classes supports a few more capabilities than structs the, than, that structs don't have. So classes can inherit from another class, like you inherit from UI view controller to create your own view controller subclass. Classes can be deinitialized. You can call a function before the class is destroyed. Classes are reference types and structs are value types. That last point is important that classes are reference types and structs are value types. Here's what's what. First, let's see value type. When you copy a value, I mean value type, when it's assigned, initialized or passed into a function, each instance keeps a unique copy of the data. If you change one instance, the other doesn't change too. Whereas in reference type, when you copy a reference type, 
Each instance shares the data. The reference itself is copied, but not the data it references. When you change one, the other changes two. This is the main difference. Next question, structures can be inherited, true or false? So answer is false. Structures cannot be inherited. Next question, define hash value versus row value. So hash value, if you had the enum without the type, uh, let's see you have not specified any type such as string, int, etc. Uh, so in that case there is no row value available but instead you get a member called hash value row value the row value on the other hand is the type value that you can assign to the enum members next is define static binding and dynamic binding so let's see what is static binding it is resolved at compile time method overloading is an example of static binding Whereas dynamic binding, it is virtual binding resolved at a runtime. Method overriding is an example of dynamic binding. What are tuples in Swift? This is really interesting topic. Let's see it in detail. A tuple is used to arrange multiple values in a single compound value. In tuple, it is not compulsory for values to be of the same type. It can be of any type. For instance, we can add string as well as integer together as a compound value. So it is a tuple having two values. One is string type and another one is in the, an integer type. Tuples are temporary container for multiple values. It is a comma separated list of types enclosed in parentheses. In other words, a tuple groups multiple values into a single compound value. Tuple is a value type. When you initialize a variable tuple with another one, it will actually create a copy. You can access the inner values using the dot notation followed by the index of the value. Here I have added one example. Have a look. I have uh, taken person variable and added two strings into it. And I have accessed it with dot notation with the index. You can uh, name the elements from a tuple and use those names to access the value. Same way uh, as we have seen that dot, dot notation, we can even uh, name the elements such as first name, last name, as you can see in the example. The best place to use a tuple would be when you want a function that can return multiple types. If you are an Objective-C developer, this concept sounds impossible unless you use an array or dictionary. Previously, we have had to overcome such a problem by either returning an NS array or NS dictionary. Next question. Advantages of using tuple instead of an array. So multiple types can be stored in a tuple whereas in an array you are restricted to one type only unless you use any object type. In tuple, fixed number of values you cannot pass less or more parameters than expected. Whereas in an array, you can put any number of arguments. Tuple is strongly typed. If the parameters of different types are passed in the wrong positions, the compiler will detect that. Whereas using an array, that won't happen. Refactoring. If the number of parameters or the type change the compiler, will produce a relevant compilation error. Whereas with arrays, uh, that will pass unnoticed. Then named, it's possible to associate a name with each parameter where it seems impossible with array. Assignment is easier and more flexible. For example, the return value can be assigned to a tuple. Next, application lifecycle. So first is application will finish launching with options boolean return type this method is intended for initial application setup storyboards have already been loaded at this point but state restoration hasn't occurred yet now let's see some launch methods first is application did finish launching with options is called next this callback method is called when the application has finished launching in restored state and can do final initialization such as creating ui 
the next method is application will enter foreground is called after application did finish launching with options or if your app becomes active again after receiving a phone call or other system interruption next is application did become active and it, that this method is called after application will enter foreground to finish up the transition to the foreground next these are the method of termination application will resign active is called when the application is about to become inactive for example when the phone receives a call or the user hits the home button then after application did enter background is called when your app enters a background state after becoming inactive you have approximately five seconds to run and task you need to back things up in case the app gets terminated later or right after that and the last method is application will terminate is called when your app is about to be purged from memory call any final cleanups here next question view controller life cycle this is also one of the very important questions which is being asked in the interview so the first method is load view this is where subclasses should create their custom view hierarchy if they aren't using a nib should never be called directly only override this method when you programmatically create views or assign the root view to the view property next method load view if needed this will load the view controllers view if it has not already been set then after view did load the view did load event is only called when the view is created and loaded into memory but the bounds for the view are not defined yet this is a good place to initialize the objects that the view controller is the view controller is going to use then the next method is view will appear it is called when the view is about to made visible default does nothing this event notifies the view controller uh, whenever the view appears on the screen in this step the view has bound that are defined but the orientation is not set then after we will layout sub views this is the first step in the life cycle where the bounds are finalized. If you are not using constraints or auto layout, you probably want to update the subviews here. The next method is view read layout sub layout subviews. This event notifies the view controller that the subviews have been set up. It is a good place to make any changes to the subviews after they have been set. Then after view did appear. The view did appear event fires after the view is presented on the screen which makes it a good place to get data from a backend service or database. Then after view will disappear. The view will disappear event fires when the view of presented view controller is about to disappear, dismiss, cover or hide behind other view controller. This is a good place where you can restrict your network calls, invalidate timer or release objects which is bound to that view controller. And the last method is view did disappear. This is the last step of the life cycle that anyone can address as this event fires just after the view of presented view controller has been disappeared, dismissed, covered or hidden. You can check the graph representation displayed on the screen. Next question, what is let and var in Swift? So let is an immutable variable or a constant that means it cannot be changed whereas where is a mutable variable meaning that it can be changed. In other words, let is used to define constants and var to define variables. Check the example which I have written value 1 is not changeable because it is let and value 2 can be changed because it is where where next question second last what is ib outlet and ib action in ios interface builder outlet is needed which is ib outlet is needed to associate properties in your application with components in interface builder ib an interface builder action, IB action, is used to allow your methods to be associated with actions in, in IB, interface builder, which is called when a specific user interaction occurs. Last question, what are the in-out parameters? 
In out parameters let you change the value of a function parameter from within the body of that function. All parameters passed into a Swift function are constant so you can't change them. If you want you can pass in one or more parameters as in out which means they can be changed inside your function as well and those changes reflect in the original value outside the function. Here I have added two examples. In first one uh, I have passed the normal parameters whereas in the second one right side I have passed the in out uh, parameter. So you can check the difference in the print statement. The first one num will print two in the second one uh, and in the second one ca character will print b. Then in the first example num1 will print 1 and in the second example character 1 will also print b because it is in out parameter and I have updated the value inside the function call. This is the end of part 2 video. I am creating videos with a block of 15 questions in it so I may not end up creating a long video at one go. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to this channel to get notified for new video added in this channel. As I said in my previous video, if you want to read these questions and answers instead of watching this video, then I have already uploaded blog on the uh, same on my personal website and link is available in the description section. You can check there. I will see you all in my next video. Till then, bye-bye.